the cash flows that are included in the capital budgeting analysis are those that are relevant to the project accept or reject decision. Often the identification of these relevant cash flows is very simple, such as when you are dealing with the revenue that the new project will bring to the firm. But there are situations where things can get more complicated, such as sunk costs, opportunity costs, and positive or negative side effects. These have the potential to create a lot of confusion, which can be easily avoided if you follow the approach explained in this video. The wrong way to deal with these types of cash flow is to memorize the definition of each one and then to try to apply that definition to each capital budgeting exercise. What seems to happen most often with this approach is that the project is visualized as a kind of closed box of cash flows that metaphorically speaking is going to be bolted on to the firm. Then the sunk or opportunity cost definition is treated as a kind of override of the logical rules for identifying the cash flows that are inside the project box. Applying this clumsy method, cash flows are put into or left out of the project timeline, not because these actions make any sense at all, but only because that is a rule that has been memorized and has to be applied. The right way to identify relevant cash flows is to start with a clear understanding of what exactly is going on in capital budgeting. Firstly, you must think about the firm as a whole. This means that you can't think of the project as a closed box of cash flows hermetically sealed off from the rest of the firm. There is no barrier between the firm and the project. The project can easily have effects on the firm outside of the project itself. Secondly, you need to think about a future for the firm that has two possible branches of reality. Only one of these can happen. Either the firm will accept the project and continue profitably into the future in a firm plus project state, or the project will be rejected and the future will be a firm without the project state of reality. It is the difference between these two alternative and competing future realities, only one of which can happen that generates the numbers for the capital budgeting schedule. Incremental cash flows are the cash flows of the whole firm with the project minus the cash flows of the firm without the project. This simple equation unlocks a true understanding of the correct responses to all of the non-routine cash flows that might occur in investment decision making. There is no need to memorize any definitions of sunk or opportunity costs or anything else. Let's look at some examples. Here, there are four different situations, a sunk cost, a negative side effect, an opportunity cost, and an allocated cost. In each case, we will consider the cash flows of the whole firm in its two alternative future states, one with the project and one without the project. The relevant cash flow is identified as column A minus column B. Starting with the sunk cost, the firm has contracted for some kind of feasibility study for the project, perhaps by an engineering or environmental consultancy. The cost of the study has already been incurred, so it is locked in. Therefore, whatever the alternative future reality for the firm, accept the project or reject it, there will always be that 1 million rand cost. To emphasize the point, if the firm decides to reject the project, it can't then call up the engineers and say, we're not going ahead, so please can we have our money back? 
So, because the 1 million rand appears in both columns, the difference is zero and there is nothing in the project timeline. For the side effect, we note the supplied information that if the project is accepted, it will reduce the existing operating cash flows of the firm by 800,000, from 10 million to 9.2 million. This kind of thing can happen when a new product line will bring in a new revenue stream for the firm, but will also result in reduced sales for existing older products. Such a strategy makes sense if the benefits of increased sales exceed the costs of the lost revenues. Continuing with the same approach, we enter 9.2 million as the cash flow for the company with the project. Without the project, there will be no lost sales, and therefore the number here is 10 million. This makes a difference of negative 800,000, which is the relevant amount for each year in the capital budgeting timeline. It is worth pausing and reflecting on the implications of what has just occurred. If you think incorrectly about the project as an isolated and self-contained box of cash flows, you would not want to recognize the negative 800,000. You would say this has nothing to do with the project, it is outside the project and so it must be ignored. And that of course would be wrong. Next, we have an empty factory building which the project can use if it is accepted. By now, I'm sure you can see where this is headed. The wrong answer is to say the project gets a building for free so there's no cash flow inside the project box and no cost at T0 in the timeline. The right approach is to agree with the zero cost if the project is accepted, but to recognize that this is only half the answer. Because without the project, the company could have sold the building for 3.2 million. Notice that there does not have to be an actual intention to sell the building. This is the nature of an opportunity cost. It brings into play the highest and best alternative use principle, which in this case is to sell the building at current market value. Having entered the correct numbers into the two columns, you end up with the right number for T0 in your timeline. Finally, there are head office costs. Companies often allocate proportionate amounts of central overheads to divisions so as to calculate inventory costs on a rational basis. Companies are also often big enough such that one additional project does not result in an increase in central costs. The new project is still allocated its fair share, however. In this example, the 500,000 Rand number is a trap for the unwary. It is completely irrelevant and nothing should be entered into the project timeline because with or without the project, the company's head office costs will be exactly the same.